is Juliana Castro and today I will be doing my persuasive speech and covering the topic on why zoos should be banned and how many of you remember the story of Harambe? In 2016, a three-year-old climbed into his pen and the gorilla Harambe dragged the three-year-old throughout his pen and soon after was killed, shot and killed by a zoo worker. Now, many may say that the um, parent, the child's parent was at fault for the situation, but um, to be honest, this situation would have been prevented if Harambe was never held at a zoo. So, in this speech, I will be covering reasons why zoos should be banned and any alternatives to zoos. So, to begin, I will discuss on how animals are taken from their natural habitats and then are taken for the reason that they are unsafe in their natural habitat when that is not the case. So according to the In Defense of Animals organization, the chronic removal of choice, which is the defining feature of captivity, no matter how large the enclosure leads to learned helplessness, which turns the, which affects the area of the brain responsible for emotion and memory, meaning that when these animals are taken from their natural habitats um, and put into captivity, let's say cages, um, start to experience loneliness and depression. So they these zoos claim that they are helping our animals, but rather than helping them, they are actually hurting them. And according to the Animal Equality Organization, animals lose control over their lives and the environment they live in. Social animals are often forced into close contact with others, some crammed, barren environments where they are constantly bullied by cage mates, meaning that some zoos tend to put a lot of animals into the same cage, causing them to be crowded and it's still experiencing this type of anxiety that they don't tend to feel when they are in their natural habitats roaming around. And I will show you two pictures here. And I want you to see the difference. So here's the first one. And now here's the second one. And do you see the difference between the two pictures? In the first picture that I showed you, you can tell that the animal is in distress with the other lion. And then with the second picture, you are able to see the um, lion more at peace and in its natural form. And that's how it should be. But um, before we move on, I would like to ask you... Um, if you would like to be taken from your home and then put in a cage just for the sole purpose of entertainment. Now, now that you've like thought about it, uh, it's not fun and it's definitely unethical, which is how animals from zoos are taken. They are perfectly fine and zoos claim to come and save uh, these animals from the wild saying that they are unable to live on their own which is not true just for the sole purpose of entertainment now that i have explained to you and shown you the ways animals are kept in zoos i will discuss how many how many animals die in zoos due to numerous reasons you may be wondering how many animals die each year and we are unable to find or to count for every animal that dies um, in zoos each year around the whole world. But um, according to Petpedia, they state that the In Defense of Animals organization says that up to 5,000 zoo animals are killed each year. Mind you, only in Europe, 5,000 animals. Can you imagine how many there are all around the world? And animals die in zoos due to many different reasons. It could be captivity, which, which, which is what we mentioned earlier. A surplus of zoo animals. Mm, 
malnutrition, meaning that they don't have a good amount of food for the animals. Diseases from either the animals there um, at the zoos or even visitors. Animal sanctuaries are better options for um, zoo animals. So now that we have a, now that we have discussed why animals die in zoos, I will talk to you about what you as an audience can do to prevent animals from experiencing this. And the alternative, like I mentioned, is sanctuaries. And in sanctuaries, animals who are no longer able to care for themselves um, are taken in by these sanctuaries where there's more room, freedom. And according to PETA, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals says that for um, people who care about animals and want to support rescue efforts, um, sanctuaries can be appealing and compassionate alternatives to cruel um, captive facilities like zoos. Um, however, though, they do say that animal entertainment industry is catching on to this and zoos and breeding facilities are now marketing their prisons, zoos, as sanctuaries or rescues and claiming to support species conservation in order to attract customers and get money. And so keep that in mind when you are visiting a sanctuary. Um, if they are truly a sanctuary and by boycotting zoos, um, they're financially unable to continue their business, causing them to close down, which is what we would like. Writing to local lawmakers about the importance of animal rights and, um, this would result in laws that would protect, protect zoo animals. Um, if you would like to read more about all of this, you can just Google uh, one, one Green Planet and the article that I chose, which was Why We Need to Boycott Zoos in 2020 by Eliza Erickson. Okay, now that I have made points on captive zoo animals, reasons why the, these animals die in zoos and what you can do as the audience to help this situation... I hope that I have persuaded you in banning zoos and like Jane Goodall said it best, what you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Thank you.